Mr. Chris Pizzo, and we are so fortunate to have him in our gym. I remember meeting Chris umpteen years ago at Gracie Barho when our kids were like this big, and my oldest just turned 18 this week, so it's been a while, right? So, lost touch, Chris started training at our gym. How long ago would you say, Chris? I, we moved out to California almost 12 years ago. So, he's been here a while, but the good thing about, or the unique thing about Chris, is not only is he a Jiu Jitsu black belt, He's a judo black belt and teaches an amazing class on Saturdays where he likes to throw us around and show us how to do it. But I wanted to get his perspective on how jiu-jitsu and judo have impacted his life, what lessons it's taught and how it helps him with everyday stresses and problems and issues. Um, so over to you, Chris. Sure. Well, let me ask you a question. Why are you so tired? Because <laughs> it's been a month since I've stepped on the mat and rolled with <laughs> because I, I got broke, <laughs> but it's, uh, I needed this, but back to you, senor. <laughs> All right, well, listen, that leads me into, into, into so the, the, the problem with me is that I've been doing martial arts since I was like four, four years old, and so eventually I went from like karate and, and everything else, you know, like in the 80s, like everybody else did, and then my mom refused to drive me to judo because she said it was too far. So then when I got my license, I realized we were two towns over, my lazy mom. And, uh, and I started driving myself. So it was weird. it's kind of a weird perspective because I've always done it. So it's not like um, I can say that it improved my life or like I learned something from there because I don't, I guess, kind of know any different. Mm -hmm. However, what's interesting is that even though I've been doing this for 40 years or whatever else, that I didn't really realize the importance of it probably like five years ago. Even when we met all the years ago, I still didn't get it, you know? And the reality, and this is why I asked you why you're so tired. Why you're so tired is the important part, judo and jujitsu is the Jew part, right? So I was joking about before, right? The, the, the J-U or the J-I-U, which is the gentle part. Mm -hmm. And the reason I just learned this is because, especially out here, both, you know, whether it was New Jersey, New York, where I'm from, or out here on the coast, right, is there's this, still this hustle mentality, right? And I, I know even in the Midwest they have it. There's, there's this, like, you know, you got you got to go, you got to go, you got to constantly be working wherever else. <clears throat> and the Jew and Judo and Jiu Jitsu is, that's not the way, right? It's the easy path, the gentle path, right? And if you're fighting too hard, it's not the right thing. Sure, there's always going to be obstacles. And usually, Stoic philosophy, the obstacle is the way, right? But to, to surpass that obstacle, you have to realize what it is and then overcome it, not just smash through it. And that you can really only learn in, I mean, high-level study of you know philosophy and, and lectures around, or through something a lot more fun, which is, which is sport. Hmm. They're the only sport, and all sports have that, but the only one that really truly embodies it are these gentle arts, right? Um, because you learn to work efficiently through those problems constantly, and you learn that failure is just a normal part, right? And nothing spells failure like just getting tapped out a hundred times, mm -hmm. right? And you learn that, hey, listen, okay, I'm going to live to fight another day. I learned my learned my lesson. Next time, I'm not going to put my arm there. Or next time I'm not going to do this. Or next time I'm not going to work so hard. And and learn and learn learn patience, right? Because that's that's the way. Maximum efficiency through as little work as possible. So that's actually shockingly surprising to me to, to hear you say you, you learned that five years ago. Yeah. Was there like a point that you went, oh crap! If I just do this or don't do this, I can get through this a lot easier. Or was it just slowly a slow realization? You, you, you can you know this better than most, right? Is that our bodies and, and our emotions, when they shut down or something happens to us health wise, right? It's a signal that we're doing something wrong. Mm. We got, to, got something we have to change. And my entire track record of business and up until again, five, like five years ago, was just pockmarked with like mental breakdowns or, you know, I, even even when I was younger, I, I, 
I, I fought cancer for like three years, you know, and I, it was a panic attack. But I thought I was having a heart attack, or actually, maybe you can relate to. Telling us, dude, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm. And eventually, I just freaking woke up and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? You know, I'm I'm yelling at my kids, or I'm you know going in and going in jujitsu. I'm working so damn hard. I'm, I'm I'm getting injured. My shoulders are gone. My knees are gone. You know, all this thing, I have all these health problems, I'm still stressed out, whatever else. And it's, I don't want to say that it's like, I just gave up. But what I did is I stopped fighting against the stream mm. and just was like, shit, this is where the stream's going. I might as well just go with it. And my favorite metaphor is that if you're going to ride the stream, right, sometimes crap's going to get in your way, right? You're riding that raft down the stream, right? You can't be taking a nap. You got to be looking around, whatever else. And if something gets in the way, you either got to steer around it kind of push it out of the way. So sort of jujitsu is that stick that you're using to push the stuff out, right? Because you can be, you know, in a bad mood, right? Kind of jujitsu, so when you focus fully, it's like almost like rebooting your computer, you know? You can focus fully for however long you're in there. It's like, you know, the state of mind raises your internal vibration, right? The home is a better day. And that's why it works. And, you know, scientifically, your mental state Right, controls your emotions, right? Your emotions control your biology. Yeah. And then your biology controls your performance. So if your emotions are not stabilized, what happens? Your body shuts down. Mm -hmm. right? And then your performance sucks with it. Right. So jujitsu is almost like that hard reset. And this is why everybody talks about this jujitsu. You know, everybody thinks we're all crazy when we talk about this stuff, right? With jujitsu, how could beating the crap out of each other, you know? And it's because it just resets because yeah. you can't focus on anything except for surviving for an hour or two, right? And that brings and resets your mental state. And the problem is then people go straight from jujitsu, or it's the same thing with meditation. They go from, you know, they meditate for 20 minutes, they go to jujitsu for a couple hours, and then next thing you know, they go back into this to the high to the grind, yeah. right? And it's total counterintuitive. It's better than nothing. You know what I mean? But if they would just take the that 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 mental state of peace that they feel from jujitsu or meditation, right? And just ride the stream for the rest of the day. And any time they need to push something out of the way or paddle around, right, to keep on going the stream, they use jujitsu, whether it's you know, an argument or a fight or just, you know, staying calm in that situation. That's what it's really for. Mm -hmm. Right. The gentle way, right? The gentle art. So when, like when you're injured or, or, or sick or whatever, and you, you're not able to step on the mat, how does that affect you like emotionally, mentally, physically? That's a good question. So um, I was 23 when I was diagnosed with a really, really aggressive strain of cancer. I fought it for three years. The only thing that, and I had like hospital roommates die on me, like, um, like one of my friends that was going through at the same time like passed on and it was just like but the only thing that got me through is like man i can't wait to go back at the time judo i can't wait to go back to judo and it was the only thing and i couldn't go i couldn't even my white blood cell count was so low i had to take injections or whatever so i couldn't even go and be around other people so like you know and this was in, in, the, in the 90s we didn't even have the internet really yeah. yet you know so you know black belt magazine and and you know, watching Saulo Hibiero videos, you know, on, on you know, you buy the videotapes, and and Marcelo Garcia moved into town, like, you know, to, and and whatever else, and, and you know, and Hoyle Gracie, it's like and all this stuff just kept me moving forward yeah. from that mental state, right? That positive, oh man, this is what I mm -hmm. want to do, and I think that even for all um, health issues, right? Yeah, that was just my thing. But I think you have to have the mission, right? You have to treat it like a mission. Yeah. I know the reason I survived is because I had something I still wanted to do afterwards. And even though it took a long time, okay. And then yes, right afterwards, I mean, I was a school teacher, but my business was teaching, you know, video self-defense and whatever else, which I eventually sold and moved out to here. But yeah, when you get injured, you just got injured, right? And whatever else, but you're still here, you know? It was, so today I just came to drill with a friend and helped him with a few things, but. I couldn't resist it, <laughs> but I trusted these guys. They know I'm injured. My first role was with uh, with with you, and Chris could have demolished me, but he very mindful, let me put in a bit of effort, but didn't beat me up. And I, don't I, needed... I don't want to work hard. I don't want to work hard. 
but I needed it, and I think most people here sense that I needed to just do something because I was going. This has been a month, and yeah, but for that was hard. That even when you first, you were still here. Oh yeah, you're still coming to class. Right? I was watching. I mean, yeah. I think uh, our other coach, my coach from White Belt Junior, says you know you can learn a lot just from watching. And if you're in this sport and you're, I'm like, you're really into it, like we are, like most of our guys here, just coming to watch, you learn a lot. Sometimes when you're on the mat, you don't see the little details of the instructor showing you. But if you're on the outside looking in, I would, oh shoot, I wasn't doing that. So for me, Jiu Jitsu was, it's always been, I need to get away from the grind. I need to watch what's going on for the new technique. I love watching the high black belt roll because uh, you can see those little details um, and I think you're the same if you can't do it you just want to be around it you want to be around your friends and for me mentally that kind of gets the angst down otherwise if I'm totally separated I'm not in a good place I really need something to uh, to, to, to center me and many years I was weightlifting but I like to lift now but it doesn't have the passion that it used to when I was younger the joints hurt Weightlifting is terrible. Uh, if it wasn't for jujitsu, I wouldn't exercise at all. Come on now. <laughs> so, uh, just being around, uh, just just coming to the gym. You know, if I lift, I'll come lift here. I've got a, a membership to another gym, and I don't go there, especially now because some of the New Year's resolution people in the gym is packed. So I come here and lift. But uh, I love coming here. I love watching uh, the, the coaches teach, and I'll just sit there and watch. You know, and if they need some help. I'll help with the white belts, and that gives me another little fix. Um, teaching, how does that help you? Do you feel that it's fulfilling as far as helping new white belts, so, white belts? This is interesting. The difference, right, and the reason why Junior, right, and Giuliano and Adriano, they're, they're so good as professionals, right, and all the professionals, we, we know they're, listen, I'm, I'm like the highest level hobbyist you can get, right, but I'm like here. The difference between a professional in this and the hobbyist is like anything else, you know? Like I'm like a, a like a good high school player, you know what I mean? They're like top NFL, you know what I mean? And and the reason why is because they don't roll, some some guys like, you know, like the, the pro athlete mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu guys, you know, they, they roll and fight whenever else it is their job. But the ones that are also teachers and have their own school, the teaching is the best way to learn anything, yeah. right? So they're constantly teaching the fundamentals and you know, and sometimes some advanced stuff, right? But it's just constant teaching. It's constantly reinforcing those neural pathways. And that's why they're so good. And it seems like there's, you know, even to me, they, 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 they kick my butt. Like it's nothing because they live and breathe it, right? And it's just part of their life. So, you know, I teach two days a week consistently and um, it does that for me. I, I am, technically a teacher and an educator by trade, right? So I've always taught something, right? Um, you know, now I teach kids how to start businesses and whatnot. Jiu-Jitsu and Judo for me is a little different because it is just my hobby. Mm -hmm. I will only teach the stuff that I like, right? Which is why I teach some of the crazy stuff that, 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 <laughs> that I know, right? Um, I, when um, at Gracie Baja, when they asked me to take over the, the headquarters for a couple of years, I lasted as head instructor for like two weeks. It's it's such a, I'm not, it, it's a, such a grueling job. And I used to be a classroom teacher, right? And it's, imagine being, especially for kids and even white belts, it's so demanding on you emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Then you add the physical part, yeah. right? It's exhausting. And I'm like, oh my God, because that's why these guys are professional athletes, is they can, do it they have such a love of it and it's you know over and over as a hobbyist and that's the difference between hobby and profession so yeah it's fulfilling to me i like doing stuff i like seeing when the the guys use what what i taught them but it's really a way at this point of my life for me to keep my own you know i prepare for class yeah. you know and all of it the, or they all do like even junior you know sunday so yeah. they're probably home watching videos you know what I mean? You're too refreshing what he's going to teach and whatnot. And we talk about that all the time. So for me to prepare for that class is almost like me going to an advanced level class myself, which is good. And then again, the best way to learn anything is to teach it. So, you know, what I really like about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is that even my, my first instructor, Ruben Toloro, he was one of my friends from, from Judo. 
And then in 1993, after the first UFC, he like disappeared. And he was a good shooter player. And he disappeared and he came out here and got his purple belt from Hoyler and came back and then started teaching himself Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? And as a purple belt, right? Teaching Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, I mean, you know, you know a lot, but you don't know, you don't have mastery of the yeah. fundamentals. But guess what? When you're teaching at that level, you're getting it really quick, mm. right? And that's, again, that, that's the big secret. And a lot of other martial arts don't have that. Yeah. They have, you know, maybe a, an assistant or something like that. But now, you know, even, that's why there's such a widespread of black belts from Jiu Jitsu. Now it's like an explosion, you know? You first started, there was like five, you know, now there's like whatever. And it's because all those guys that are black belts now have been instructing for, since they were, you know, blue and purple belts even. And it's a big thing. You only have to be, it's like anything you're teaching, you only have to be one step ahead of somebody else to be valuable to the person. Yeah. Right. And that's it. So, I don't know if that answered your question. That did, man. That's great. That's great. Uh, well, I think we've pretty much covered it a lot. And uh, I will be showing up to classes. Okay. That's good. <laughs> you learned, Thank you, you learned the gentle way. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't be so tired next time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care.